Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Jacques Cologne. I'm the 2025 Strategic Manager for the City of Tacoma. Um, for those of you that don't know, Tacoma 2025 is the city's strategic plan. And when I say the city, I don't mean the city government. It was a community visioning process where more than 2,000 residents actually uh, determined what the future of Tacoma should look like. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. One of the reasons I love Tacoma is that we have things like this in spaces like this, about issues like this. Um, this is a very great time and place to be here. So what is affordability? Uh, the current state of things specific to housing, trends that are shaping the future, which is really where I want to spend the bulk of my time uh, speaking. And then I want to talk to you about the Affordable Housing Action Strategy, which is the city of Tacoma's uh, strategy for addressing the affordable housing crisis. And it is a crisis, which we will talk more about. Um, there are more people in here than I, I hear usually come to these events. I'm guessing that this issue, um, because of the nature of crisis, is one that draws people. Uh, if you have been paying attention at all to the election that we recently had, uh, affordable housing was one of, if not the, most important issues that folks kept coming back to, kept hearing about it doors. Um, and homelessness is part of the same issue. It is a piece of the same spectrum of housing, where you go from quality, stable housing all the way to experiencing homelessness, right? And there's a lot of things in between those two things, but they're really on the same spectrum. So in Tacoma 2025, there are five main goal areas, livability, economy and workforce, education, civic engagement, equity and accessibility. In a nutshell, these are the things that people said they would need to have in Tacoma for it to be the place that they envisioned of the future. Very livable, great economy, strong education system, an engaged community, and opportunities that are equitably shared in our community. So diving into livability, um, what I want to share is one of the indicators uh, in livability talks about we want to decrease the percentage of individuals who are spending more than 45% of their income on housing and transportation. So you heard Amanda talk about 30% of income towards housing as cost burden. Well, transportation is an important piece to think about too because we are increasingly seeing our affordable housing getting suburbanized which means that it is further from high opportunity transportation, which means that we are increasing dependence on single family or single occupancy vehicles for people who can least afford them, Does that, if that makes sense. So there are three parts of this puzzle when we talk about affordability. There's income, there's housing, and there's transportation. Any one of those three legs of the stool come off, it doesn't work anymore. Having affordable housing in the suburbs without transportation does not work. Having housing that is in transportation rich areas, but we don't have the income to support those folks, that's not going to work either. So what you will hear from a lot of folks today are different perspectives on those angles of income, housing, and per perhaps transportation. Now why this is such an, uh, an equity issue is that how many of you know about residential redlining? Quite a few people, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but the reality is that since 80 years ago, our community has been intentionally designed for racial and, and subsequent economic segregation. And that was done by the Federal Housing Authority and by a number of different local agencies. If you would like to learn more, there is a ton of stuff about the impact of residential redlining, and it happened here. This is Tacoma that you see on this map. The, the translation of that to today is that we see that opportunities like livability in this middle picture is in the Tacoma Equity Index from today, you see that opportunity is inequitably distributed across our city. And that should not be something that's shocking to you if you, if you live here and you work here. Um, so today, what we see in terms of affordability is that we have huge gaps, huge gaps. One of them is that the one that I most want to talk about is that for every 27 extremely low income folks, these are people that make between zero and 50% of the area median income, there are only 27 units for every 100 of those families, okay? So when we talk about an affordable housing crisis, there is a real deficit of housing for folks that cannot afford the rents that are rising at a rate of 16, 18, 20% here in Tacoma. Um, 
there are problems across every economic spectrum when we talk about affordability. So affordability is different than affordable housing. Like when we talk about low income or uh, subsidized housing, that is an issue. And I'm showing you in that, in that diagram that that is a big issue. But we also know that every level of the economic spectrum is struggling with affordability right now, right? The supply and the demand are not working out in a way that's working out for everybody. Now, this is only going to get worse. That's really the, the gist of what I'm going to tell you. This is bad now, it is only going to get worse. Three things are happening in the near future. Population growth, we can expect up to two million new people in the region by 2050, according to P the Puget Sound Regional Council. A lot of them are gonna be coming to Tacoma. In addition, climate change is happening. And the impacts of climate change are not going to be felt here as much as they are in other places, which just means that population growth is actually going to be compounded because people are going to be relocating here at a higher rate in the future. And then if anybody has been following the presidential uh, primaries on the Democratic side and has heard Andrew Yang speak about automation, uh, the reality is that half of the jobs in Pierce County are at high risk of automation in the coming years, retail being the number one area. So as we talk about income, housing, and transportation, the reality is that population growth plus automation of some of our biggest industries, that calculation does not work out for affordability, all right? So as we think about what the role of the city is in solving this problem, the Affordable Housing Action Strategy seeks to do four things. Create more housing, preserve existing affordable housing, and help households uh, the fourth being reducing barriers for those households that often experience them. And we're really looking to make 6,000 new units of affordable housing in the next 10 years, preserving 2,300 units of affordable housing in the coming 10 years, and helping an additional several thousand households that otherwise might be slipping into, for example, experiencing homelessness. So as we think about all the things that we can do as a community, um, we are trying to think about them in those general buckets. And so as we think about the future of affordability, we have to recognize that population growth, specifically, plus the way that our city is designed, means that we have to change what we're doing. This problem is not going to get solved by continuing to double down on some of the same policies and practices that have helped build the city to be what it is today. And so as we think about reshaping the multifamily tax exemption, looking at policies like inclusionary zoning, looking at how single, uh, single family residential zoning prevents us from developing the population density that we would need to accommodate the numbers that we are actually talking about, these are the realities of Tacoma's future that we need to be realistic about and that we need to tackle in a coordinated partnership sort of way. So as I step back from my presentation, I'm gonna be very interested to really sit back and listen to other perspectives because this is a really complex issue that no one perspective can solve. So I guess I will leave you with that, that this issue has many realities built into it that are going to be very difficult for any one person or any one organization to solve, impossible in fact, as you all know. And so um, with that, the reality is that uh, the future is bright. We just need to be intentional about designing it in a way that can accommodate those realities so that we still have an affordable city that everybody can enjoy opportunity in. Thank you.